The Art of Soldering. This is part two, and it's all about silver soldering. There are distinct differences between silver soldering and soft soldering, but parts of the process are identical. For instance, in this clip, I'm deburring the end of the pipes so that the coned unions fit on the end of the pipe. This video footage that you're watching has been edited from a previous video about silver soldering. This, for instance, is an extract from my video series How to Build a Model Steam Launch, which I made a long time ago. I used to refer to the union cones as nipples, but quite a lot of viewers seem to get very aroused about this, so I really did get fed up of all the stupid comments. That's why now I refer to them as union cones. I've cleaned up the pipework thoroughly using a piece of Scotch Brite, and in case you don't know, Scotch Brite is an abrasive scouring pad. Here you see me applying the silver solder flux to the pipe. The flux that I'm using in this clip is called Easy Flow Number 2, and this is still available. But the original solder that I'm using in this video is no longer available. It was known as Easy Flow Number 2 Silver Solder and contained cadmium, and it used to flow really well, but it was found to be dangerous. So now we generally use silver solder that doesn't contain cadmium. I always buy my silver solder from Blackgates Engineering, but be warned, it is not cheap. And here is a silver soldering application. I'm heating the entire part to a dull red heat. And when it's at the correct temperature and you apply the silver solder, this is what happens. The solder flashes all around the joint due to capillary action. You must never confuse silver solder with soft solder. Soft soldering is a low temperature process. It uses an entirely different flux, and silver soldering is a high temperature process where the work needs to be heated to at least dull red heat. Because of the lighting for the video, the dull red heat is not showing up very clearly. But take my word for it, if you do not apply enough heat, all you will get is a blob of silver solder on one side of the pipe. When I made this video, I had to silver solder a few pieces of pipe. So it allowed me to repeat the process and show one or two common problems. The most common problem is not having enough heat from the blowtorch to get the components to the right temperature. As you can see from this clip, I don't have that problem. My blowtorch is substantial. The second problem you can see is here I'm applying too much silver solder which runs down the pipe. Silver solder flux is a white powder and you mix it with water to the consistency of single cream. Then you apply it to the pipe and fit the union cone. And once you start to heat up the part, you will notice that suddenly the flux takes on a watery appearance. That is the time to apply the silver solder. But don't forget that the silver solder will bond to the metal wherever there is molten flux. The propane gas blowtorch that I use is a sievert blowtorch, the spellings on screen, and it has interchangeable blowtorch heads. This is the one that I use most of the time and it's ideal for general purpose soldering jobs. I bought my gas blowtorch system in the early 1980s and it's just as good today as it was then, although maybe not quite as shiny. Try and avoid the cheap ones that you buy at supermarkets, they're not very good. Yes, these sievert systems are quite expensive, but you get what you pay for. You will notice that after the soldering has been completed, the pipes are very discoloured and there's a lot of oxidisation around the joint. You need to get rid of this. More about that at the end of the video. The next silver soldering operation is different. I'm making a rudder for a large model boat. The silver soldering operation though is identical. The only difference being is that you have to line up the parts accurately before you start. Because once you start the silver soldering process, if they move around, then things are going to be in the wrong position. I thoroughly cleaned the parts and you've just seen me apply the flux to the rudder blade. The rudder shaft and the blade assemblies are supported by a piece of fire grate. This is stainless steel fire grate from Blackgates Engineering and it's ideal for holding parts like this. For this demonstration I'm not really doing the job properly. I'm applying the silver solder before the work is hot enough and as you can see it just sits like a blob of silver solder on the work until you get the work hot enough and then it flows. It's a better idea to get the work hot enough in the first place before you apply the silver solder. In this part of the clip you can see that even though it looks like it's hot enough, it's still only just hot enough to melt the solder. 
You can see that when the solder is first applied, it stays as a lump on the work. Then when I heat it further, the silver solder starts to flow. By the way, as this is a demonstration, I've applied far too much silver solder to this. If you heat the part up to the correct temperature evenly and throughout, then a small amount of silver solder will flash down the joint. For the purpose of this tutorial video, it's good to show quite a lot being applied so you can see the principle clearly. Once you've finished the silver soldering, it's really important to let the parts cool to black before quenching them in water. And once the parts are cool enough to handle, you can put them in the acid bath. Sulfuric acid is best, but I use some stuff called Kilrock K, which is formic acid based and it's kettle descaler. The body parts are an optional extra and play no part in the cleaning of the metal. And that's it for this episode. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful.